You ever see those logos that blur the lines between illustration and typography? Well, today we're gonna do just that. Make a mental medieval dungeon sin style logo in Adobe Photoshop. What's the crack? My name's Kieran. Welcome to Spearhead the Metal Art Channel. In this tutorial, I'm gonna run you through creating an insanely detailed, fancy inspired metal logo that'll be perfect for any dungeon synth or a black metal band. We're gonna build it up using some creepy black letter typography, savage medieval weapons and chains, and top it all off with some blood for the blood god. Skulls for the skull First of all, major thanks to Serpent Sword Records for providing the perfect soundtrack for this one. Make sure you go support them at the links in the description. There's a wealth of moody, ambient masterpieces for all the dungeon creepers out there. Right, I hope you picked your party well for this one and grabbed your favorite orb to ponder. Right, so here we are in Photoshop and we're about to get going. We're gonna open an artboard that's A3 in size, that's 4961 by 3508 pixels at 300 dpi. We're gonna start by typing out the name of our logo. In this case, it's gonna be Eden's Vault, which is a sick new clothing line based out of the UK. I'm using a free font called Engravers for this, but you can literally use any sort of black letter or old English style font. And cause I'm feeling generous as always, I'm dropping my font Siege Engine in the link in the description. Go grab that and use it for all your projects. I just extended the the vertical height of the lowercase letters here to make them a little bit more imposing and I've dropped in a PNG of a black letter E here which I'm then going to duplicate, mirror flip and bring that over to the end because I want this to be kind of symmetrical in the sense that the E and the T will kind of balance the whole logo and hierarchy. As you can see I'm kind of chopping bits out and pasting bits on using my warp to tuck things in and twist it around because I want to create my own letters here to have the feeling that I'm going for. Once I was happy with how my E was looking, I duplicated it, I mirror flipped it horizontally, dragged it over to where the T is gonna be and chopped off the center bit so it really looks like a T. The beauty of this style is you can kind of get away with ambiguous letter forms. As you can see here, I'm just sort of playing around, trying to get a feel for how I want the logo to be rendered. Playing around with some arcing warp on the lowercase letters, decided to go against it. Then I start chopping bits off my E and my T here. I basically cut off those flicks on the end and then I flip them vertically so that they're facing downwards because I want these to be wrapping around the swords I'm gonna throw into the letters. And once I was happy with how all of these are looking, I duplicated those layers, then merged them onto one. And then I start playing around with my perspective, my arcing warp to get a little bit more motion into the logo. I've taken the PNG of the sword here, but I opt not to throw it in yet. I wanna draw the details on the letters first. So I just leave that PNG on the side and we'll come back to it later. Now, once I was happy with how that was looking, I make a new layer and I call it logo details. I then take my logo rough layer and I drop the opacity down to about 50. I then take my free lasso tool and on my logo details layer, I'm just gonna start drawing out the overall shape of the letter forms. I'm taking care to really like extend the ends. I'm using the overall shape of the letters that we put down as a base, as a guide, but I'm really kind of nasty in these up. I'm putting spikes here and there and I'm putting dents all over the place to really give this that sort of damaged armor feel as if it's been lying in a dungeon for a thousand years. Once the E was looking the business, I basically just duplicated that and then I flipped it horizontally, dragged it down over to where the T is, and then I just start nip tucking bits and bobs so I can really differentiate between the E and the T. But we're gonna keep the overall symmetry, balance, and hierarchy of these two capital letters at the ends of our logo. I then move on to the lowercase letters, and I'm basically rinsing and repeating. I'm using our free lasso tool, and I'm drawing over the guide layers. I'm taking care to extend the serifs at the tops and the bottoms of the letters, I'm putting big spike ascenders on the bottom as well and the top. None of this is set in stone at this stage yet. I'm still very much getting a feel for how I want these letters to be rendered. But as you can see, I'm really making them look evil. A big inspiration for me for this style of logo work is really old White Dwarf magazines. I'm a huge Warhammer nerd and I have been since the mid 90s. I don't know if that's something to brag about, but my God, I love it. But I have a huge collection of White Dwarf magazines that I constantly go back and forth looking at and they really just inspire me so much to make crazy looking logos. To be honest, if we just drew these letters out as we have them here and did nothing else to this logo, it would still look amazing. Now that I was happy with our drawn letter forms, I'm just gonna play around with a little bit more warping and arching and see if we can get a little bit more movement into it. I then take our sword PNG and I'm gonna put it over the thickest parts of the E and the T at the ends of the logo. I wanna basically make it look like these swords are slashing through the two capital letters. I make them black and white and then I bring the levels down to put some huge contrast into it. I then 
put a black stroke on the outside of about five pixels and then I rasterize it. I then duplicate our logo layer and with the layer on top, I invert it and I put like an inner black stroke on it. I then rasterize that and then I invert it again and I put another black stroke in the center. And this will give it that like kind of 3D feeling. It really thickens up the letters and it provides a lot more going on. And then I opened this really cool picture of a load of human skulls. I think it's in the catacombs in Paris possibly. It has that kind of feeling to it. I'm gonna unlock this layer and then I'm gonna use our free lasso tool to start drawing around the edges of the skulls. I'm just then gonna delete our selections. And once I have the skulls isolated by themselves, I'm gonna copy and paste them into our logo layer. I've duplicated our like 3D logo layer here, going in with our magic wand tool and selecting the black parts in the center and I'm deleting them. I'm then pasting our skulls layer below that layer. So the border part of the logo is overlaid above the skulls. I then just play around with my sizing and I copy and paste it multiple times and sort of align it with the letter forms. I then select our logo detail layer, use our magic wand tool to select the outside, then grab our skulls layer again and press delete. I rinse and repeat this multiple times, just sort of feeling out where the skulls look best on the big parts of the letters. Again, using the magic wand tool to select the outside of our logo layers, then grabbing the skull and delete. I keep lining them up until they look right to my eye. There is no real science to this. You're just gonna play it by ear and whatever looks badass looks badass. I then go in and make our skulls layer black and white, go into my levels, and drop the blacks right down to give loads of contrast. I've then made a selection of the internal parts of all of our letters. I've made a new layer, filled that with black. Then I've inverted that layer so it's white. I've then put an internal black stroke on it, rasterized it, then selected all the white parts and deleted them. And that's created a nice black border between the skulls and the rest of our letter. It just kind of breaks up the different elements of the logo nicely. If you've managed to survive this long into the quest, then fair play. Give me a little like and subscribe. That stuff goes a long way to helping the channel. After this, I've made a new layer above the skulls. I've gone into my brush tool and I've selected an amazing stipple brush by True Grit Texture Supply. This stippling brush basically saves you a hell of a lot of time. And it gives you that really cool stipple effect that's sought after in so many art styles. With the stippling brush I've just gone over the parts where the skulls meet the black parts of the letter so it looks more like an offering to the blood god corn than it does like a load of skulls slapped on a bunch of letters. Skulls! Now once I was happy with that and it was looking suitably evil we're gonna grab our chains PNGs. So I've taken the first chain here and I've overlaid it so it looks like it's sort of wrapping around the letters. I then make that black and white, go into our levels and drag the blacks down to provide a super high contrast on it. I then put a center black stroke on it, kind of about 8 pixels to 5 pixels. And then I use my warp tool to kind of like lay it around the letter forms themselves. Because we really want it to look like these chains are weaving in and out between the letters. I then take my other chain PNG, I rinse and repeat the whole process and I lay this over the center of the logo. I then go in with a hard eraser and I'm kind of chopping the ends off here. I'm going to try and match the levels to make it as similar looking to the other chains as possible. And we're going to use our warp tool to get it lined up and looking seamless. When I was happy with that, I then rasterize the chains layer, duplicate it, and I throw one layer below the letter forms and one above. I then make a selection of the letter forms and with a hard eraser, I basically just kind of rub out every second part of the letter if you get me. This will kind of make it look like the chain is wrapping in and out and weaving around the different letters and it kind of looks like the letters themselves are alive then and they've gotten tangled up in this like dungeony, chainy, horrible looking mess. And when I say horrible looking mess, I am saying that in the best way possible because I love nasty looking logos like this. Then I've put some arcing warp on it just so it kind of sits in the center the letters and now I'm just repeating that same process again. I've made a selection of our letters and with our chain layer on top I'm going in with a hard eraser and I'm rubbing out every second part and boom it was looking delish. Now I'm duplicating part of the skulls to make it look like the swords are bursting through the skulls and sticking out the bottom of the logo and once I was happy with this I save our project and merge all of our files onto one layer. I then go into filter and go into liquify and with liquify I'm basically pulling out all the spikes on the tops and the bottom of the logo because I was feeling it could look a little bit more chaos. I wanted this to be an offering to the blood god after all. After this I thought it was looking mean as hell, so I basically just pull out the vertical height and put another arch on it. Then I've gone back into liquify and I'm going even more ham with the spike, just to have it looking wild. After this I thought the pommel and the handguards on the swords could look a little bit more evil, so again I've gone into liquify and pulled them out a bit to make them a little bit more dramatic. Then I duplicate our full logo and then I nudge the top layer up about 10 pixels to provide an extra bit of 3 dimensional depth. 
This will make it look a lot heavier and a lot more physical than just a flat bunch of letters if you get me. And with liquify you can always go overboard so be really careful when you're doing this. Now it's time for the blood splats for the blood god. I've basically gone in and I've taken my spearhead grit here and what I'm doing is I'm overlaying it over the logo itself. I'm duplicating and I'm rotating and I'm just lining it up so all these little black splats are going to be texturing up and making the logo a little bit more detailed. As always I left a little folder, link is in the description. Grab the assets in there and use them in all your projects going forward, nice one. Then once I was happy with how the black grit was looking, I duplicate one of the grit layers and I invert it to white and I rinse and repeat. Now I'm going in for a final brush tool pass. I'm basically just drawing in extra bits of the stroke here and there and putting in some detail in black and white just to put the finishing touches on the logo. Now I've gone in and I've used a cool skull PNG and I'm going into liquify and I'm basically making it a little bit more evil and a little bit more angry looking and I'm throwing this skull up on the top of the sword. I've made the skull layer black and white, brought down our levels to increase the contrast then I've duplicated it, flipped that horizontally, and brought that over to the other sword. I kind of wanted these swords to look more like something that a champion of chaos would be wielding. Now for one of the most important parts of the logo. I've merged everything onto one layer, and I've whacked the contrast up. Really, really whacked it up. I've then gone into our filter gallery here, and I've gone into stamp, and I've gone into grain. And this is basically going to give it that flat Xerox sort of look. If you'd like to learn how to do this in much more detail, check the link up there. I've got a full tutorial on it and you can apply it to all your designs and logos. It's an absolute lifesaver. You can kind of play around with your values here, like your intensity, your contrast, different sizes of grain and stuff. And once you're happy with how it's going to look, just press go. And this process will really sandwich every individual piece of this logo together and have it looking mean as hell. And with that, as you can see, all I'm going in and doing now is just refining edge. I'm basically putting up the contrast on the edge, bringing it in a couple of pixels. Then I'm selecting inverse on that selection and pressing delete. And there you have it, an absolutely insane and pure evil, over the top, crazy detailed dungeon synth logo. Happy days. There we have it. We saw this one through to the end. Lucky I didn't have too many problems this time. So I really hope this video helped to shed a little bit of light on how to create ultra detailed metal logos like this. I know it can be a little bit daunting trying to find a starting point for stuff in this style. So please use my technique as a little bit of a foundation and bring it to the next level yourself. Once again, a huge thanks to Serpent Sword Records for kindly providing the tunes for this one. Go support the label at the links down below and take a dive down that dungeon synth rabbit hole. Also, feel free to join the Scrap Heap, the Spearhead Community Discord server. We would love to see you there for chats about cats, tea, art and music. And if you enjoyed this video, check out more of my tutorials at the link up there. And thanks again for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.